we here? Hello. Hello, everyone. Guess what? It's so live. live. Whoa. What's going on? With Steph and Eileen. I think now it's live. Oh, look. Okay. It's got this new thing. So our, okay. whole, our whole dashboard thing has oh. completely changed. Oh. See it So that there? explains our confusion. Yeah. So now yeah. it's not live. So we have been live for 17 seconds. So, and I don't know... If it's going to show, oh, viewers are down here. Okay. Instead of, oh, oh it's, things still, out, it's still up here. Okay. If you could see the mouse squirreling around, you, yeah, that's okay. funny. Yeah. Okay. So, well, oh, anyway, we we're here. here. We're here. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So the question for the week is, what time of the day do you find yourself most sewing? So are you a night sewer, a day sewer? If you're a mom with kids and you put the kids down for a nap, you sew during then, or do you sew all day long? And if you do, you are a fortunate person indeed. So let us know. Too. Are you one of those early, early morning people? Mm -hmm. Get up, you put the dog out, and then you go sew. Well, I, I, I come back in too. I don't know what that's about. I'm not early morning at all. She's not an early morning person. <laughs> I depend on the day. Yeah, I'm kind of a grumpy, grumpy in the morning until I have my first cup of coffee, which sometimes isn't until afternoon, so I'm kind of grumpy all day long. Sorry. I don't have a problem with grumpy based on caffeine intake. I do have a based on lack of sleep and being super tired mm -hmm. and not having glasses. Oh, I've had can a weekend. share that story? Oh, sure, let's just go for it. Because <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's been a long week, people. So we went to oh uh, Hampton, Iowa, to do the um, Franklin General Hospital Auxiliaries quilt show last weekend. Woo, that's kind of great. Talk about nice people. Oh, my gosh. We had such fun with them. They were so wonderful. And we were staying at a, a, a hotel nearby. And poor American. Steph, yeah, yeah, and poor Steph, she's hungry, so she goes to get the Continental Breakfast. She comes back. We drive. She's like... Where's my glasses? Can't figure out what I do with my glasses. And I'm like, oh, well, they're either in the room or I left them at the breakfast place. So I, we did a few more things and then I finally got a chance and I called them oh. and I said, any chance my glasses are there? And they checked, they checked and they no. didn't see anything. And so, I'm like, I must have left them in so the room. So we went through everything. We did. We went through the stuff at the shop, or at the show, show at the in our room. room. We went Air. everywhere. Dwayne was crawling. Dwayne came up because they tried to save us that night because we had gone through so many Australian fabrics. And he was crawling around on the floor trying to figure out where I'm at. I mean, how can you lose a pair of glasses <laughs> that are like readers that you have to have? No, I think I set them down next to the eggs. And somebody must have taken them. So and not somebody there... Eggs. Needed a pair of glasses so bad that they stole those. <laughs> they took my prescription They took glasses. her prescription glasses, so you're welcome. Yeah. Use them in good health. Thank heavens. I have a very tolerant sister, and <laughs> she has a wonderful staff. Because I call, I texted her on Saturday. Was it Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. I don't even yeah. know anymore. It was this weekend. And I said, I'll be in tomorrow to pick up my glasses. LOL. I'll actually be in to order them tomorrow. <laughs> So she and her staff are putting or a rush on my glasses sure. so, so I can, can have them by next week. So she can see. Otherwise, I have to do this for her. <laughs> ah, yeah. So, anyways. Yeah, unfortunately. That was, that was our fun, fun <laughs> mishap this weekend. You think I look different? That's why. Yeah. And then I'll be looking next different next week because I'll have new glasses. So, not exactly my plan, but that's what happens. That's okay. So, you guys, we just want to share some announcements with you. Um, so, the results of last week's question was your favorite notion. We had a quilter's palette, which I looked that up, and it looks like it's a book. Um, Pat, you had said something about that. And it looks like it's a book to help you kind of figure out your coloring, I think. I didn't dive too deep into it, so maybe um, you could post or, or if you're on. I can't see who's on because, like I said, they changed all of this, so it's way down here. And I'd look, but I can't see anything anyway. So I can't see what you guys are, are typing. Well, maybe. Oh, I okay, try. now I can. So Pat says she sews just about all day. Love it. Sally, all day. Hi, Sally. Lucky Terry, people. hi, um, Terry, or Jerry, sews in the afternoons. <laughs> Margaret says she sews 
when her machine calls her name all different times of day. Lovely. Nancy says in the mornings and the afternoons mainly. In the evenings is when Karen does. Hello, girl. Heidi says mostly in the evenings. The feed keeps stalling. Oh, no. Okay, that's good to know. Thanks, Margaret. Hopefully, you guys let us know, um, and we will try to uh, just keep rolling. Oh, um, Miss, okay, Miss Mary Lou. Go. Oh, we've got that going. I'm trying uh, to Aunt that. Mary Lou, we saw her this Hello. weekend, and we had a good time with her. Eileen actually got to spend some time with Aunt Mary Lou. I and did. We had a chat with her. I, I got sidetracked with her customer. She, so. she gave me a great tip for a, a boutique there in Hampton, so I was excited about that. So, um, Oh, Dwayne's watching. Oh, Miss Lynn Kramer, whenever you can, and Mary Lou, whenever you can. Okay, so I'm going to stop reading these. You guys keep posting those comments. So I'm going to tell you when I like to sew. I like to sew at night. You're like the midnight quilter. And the midnight quilter, but not the midnight quilter because she's got her own show and I'm sure that's copywritten. And You're like the 1 a.m. quilter. <laughs> the 1 a.m. quilter. When do you like to sew? Actually, my I love sewing when I'm at the shop because mm -hmm. there's something about being here. I feel like I got everything I need. I was so, going to say, you can go, wait, I need more of that. It's right there, I'm right there. And, oh, where did I put those scissors? Ah, oh, there, fine, I'll go. I've gotten That's more supplies that way. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Uh, do not look at oh, our profile. Watching. Hello, guys. Yeah. Do not look at our profiles and see how much we spend here at our own shop. Because, exactly. Hmm. No comment. What happens at <laughs> It's So Tempting? Stays at It's So Tempting. All right, so okay. upcoming shows. What upcoming shows do we have? Well, the next one is actually in September, and it's not even our show necessarily, but it's the Iowa Falls yeah. show. Well, it's not in Iowa. It's the Sac County Quilt Affair. They, but this is one that the Iowa Falls shop is going to. I'll be there too. So Eileen will be there. I, yes, Iowa Falls <laughs> and Eileen. And you guys, I'm super excited to do this because if you guys know the Iowa Falls shop and you know Denise, she is just a ball of energy and I am super excited to like just kind of stand there and go. <laughs> she has got she, so much to teach us. She is just. Whether she wants to or not. Amazing. Good help. Amazing. And I don't think she does Facebook, so she has no idea I'm talking about her. But if Lisa, you're on, you'll know. But yeah, she's just super fun and I love watching her. So I'm anyway. excited. This show is September 25th and 26th, um, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So, and I honestly don't know the days. days of the week. Is that Friday, Saturday, I, Saturday, Sunday? I don't know. I haven't gotten that far ahead. We're at the beginning of September. We'll tell you more next time. Yes. But 25th and 26th, if you want to look it up, then you'll know. But that's coming up um, at the Sac County Fairgrounds in Sac City. So. There's, that is our one show. We, are, we have a few more, but some of them are so far out that we figure you're just going to get confused if we present them all at the same time. <laughs> so that's it for right now on that one. Yeah. Um, if you want to join the tote bag class, we have a time. Yes. Okay. Next Friday. Or next There's, Friday? Yeah. Yeah, it's next Friday. Next Friday, 10th at 5 o'clock. 5 p.m. We have so, how many people signed up? We already up? have three signed up. So we have room for one more. So first come, first serve. Yep. You can just tell us because it's still waiting to be put in the system. <laughs> yeah, sorry, guys. But so. once we get that in the system, I'll post it on Facebook, um, and, and we'll let the gals who have signed up know first so they can get it all dialed in. And, and if, then, there's, if more people want it, we can always schedule another one down right. the road. So just let, let us, us know, know if you're interested, and we can always keep working. Keep with it going. It, so. Keep it going. We're good there. So what else do we have? I think that's it for Mouse. What is your favorite thing, Steph? My favorite thing, actually, is because of the Franklin County Show. Yes. This, okay, this is, does not look that... Interlock. Yeah, interlace. 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 It does not look like it's that crazy or anything like that. It's also black and white, so nobody really... Puts that. Ah, oh my that's gosh. Really cool. We saw this one done when we were up there. It was amazing it was so beautiful it was so cool it was it was done in grunge with a gold tint to it or gold, gold metallic gold, or gold metallic kind of thing and some of them were the circles and some of them were just the plain grunge it was so cool anyway i have a new respect 
for this pattern. Sometimes yeah. you just have to see it in person to, well, to get it. But they didn't want to influence you by giving you those colors, so that's why it's black and white. So, and there was a gal there who was part of the guild, and she was helping mm -hmm. out. That and was Barb. Not Barb. Wasn't Barb? No, it was Bert. Bert! I knew it began with B. And her and I were looking at all the quilts, and she said, I just love that gold quilt. It's just so, the grunge gold. And she kept saying gold. In my head, I was thinking a yellow quilt, and she's like, the one right over there. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I can't see it. And then I, it dawned on me that she was like, it, grunge gold metallic. So finally I saw it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And I thought we had the pattern, but I thought it was a different pattern. And so we went and looked. We didn't have it. Then Steph goes to me, like, the next day. She's like, oh, we have that pattern over there with the gold grunge. I'm like, <laughs> she didn't speak to me. She walked up, grabbed the pattern, and walked away. And I'm like, am I supposed to be following you? I have she no idea. She followed me for, like, doing. about 10 feet. Oh, yeah, I made it about 10 feet. And I'm like, I'm not following you. <laughs> I have no idea where you're going. Because she was, like, halfway across the other. I'm like, I don't know where she's going. But, anyway, the, happy, the, the good thing is we made Bert happy. Yeah. She got her pattern. Mm -hmm. And this is now... A, a more highly respected pattern yes. by you. So that means so. if you guys want a pattern that we don't have and we can get it for you, I will hunt you down to get it to you. Because <laughs> I think we find out that we have it. If we have it, if we get it, I will hunt you down and make Plus, sure you have it. Not that I'm trying to skip your favorite thing. But you did do some hunting down a pattern, so we'll talk about that later on. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's amazing what this girl can find. So, anyway, before we get too far, I should be CIA. <laughs> That's it. Okay. All right. What's my start favorite? getting job offers from them. Job offers. So my favorite thing is um, fabrics that can be used for more than quilting. And for instance, fabrics like this, kind of art fabric. Artsy looking. So you guys, we've shown you this before. This is one of our new ones that's come in, in the last month or so, and. To me, it's very modern looking and beautiful, and it's it's more than just your typical quilting fabric in, in my eyes. And you're going to see a little bit later on why I think that. So I'm going to leave it at that. That's my favorite thing. It, a teaser. A teaser. Those kinds of fabrics that allow you to do much more than just quilting. So let's see here. Oh, look at all, look at all you guys. <laughs> Can't have too much grunge or, grunge or Tim Holtz. That is very true. Oh, you guys were saying hi to each other. I love that. I love That's cool. that. That's cool. Only I love that hours. we have some people making friends among oh, <laughs> Miss Lynn, 25th and 26th. She says it's Saturday and Sunday, folks. Okay, there you Thank go. Thank you. Okay, so go back up here. See, we had to scroll down just to see. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm like, liking this new stuff. Like we'll you know, we'll we do it to Facebook. Here, I'll put that there so you can read mine. Oh, okay. How's that? Easier. I can't read them, but, you know, at least we'll make progress. My hubby likes the Tim Holtz. Yeah, Tim Holtz is pretty good. Tim Holtz is pretty good. So okay. my, my personal goal someday for the shop is to get Tim Holtz in the shop somehow, like on our Facebook Live. I don't know how we can accomplish that, but I don't know. That's a goal for the future. It's a, it's a future goal. I, okay. Yeah. Okay, so keep going. Okay, so um, what I thought maybe we'd do is this. Okay. So we were talking about our quilter show that we were just at and what we did there is we took names and we're gonna do a drawing so we're gonna do a drawing live so if you guys were there and you entered a drawing it is time to do the drawing so Steph would you like to show them what they are going to be winning <laughs> Vanna <laughs> okay you will win this bundle of fabric there are six fat quarters as chosen by Deb. Deb. Deb Lucas. Miss Deb. And oh Deb gosh, Lucas. you guys, did I make a connection there? First of all, Miss Deb Lucas? Was her last name? Lucas. Lucas, sorry. Lucas. Not only is she a fantastic lady, I just enjoyed her so much, but let's just say that our uh, Australia trip plan might just actually become a reality. It's pretty exciting. It's <laughs> nice to know people, I'll tell so, you. That. We are also giving away a $20 gift certificate to It's So Tempting. Yay. So, it's a good combination. Good combo. So you get a lovely fat quarter bundle with some 1930s fabrics mm -hmm. and $20 gift certificate. So Steph, I'm going to let you pick our winner. Okay. Da -da -da. 
No preferences here. Okay. Who wins? Do you want me to read it? I, yeah, I do. <laughs> Rosie, I can't pronounce your last name, but Rosie. Is it Turgerson? Jurgensen? No, it starts, with, it starts with an S. Oh. But regardless, you have given us your information, so we can contact you. So, Rosie, you are the winner of this wonderful fat quarter bundle. And what town is she from? She's from Hampton, so she is, oh, was oh, a local gal. So you have won a fat quarter bundle and a twenty dollars gift certificate to It's So Tempting. So we will contact you if you're not listening right now. Congratulations, Rosie. If you are listening, congratulations too. Congratulations. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> got it kind of backwards but that's okay y'all know what I mean so Miss Rosie congratulations yay, yay good job. Own, we don't have a live studio audience so we have to be our own live studio <laughs> audience we also had the privilege of being able to donate for some 4-H uh, state Iowa State Fair sewing gifts this year and we were pretty excited when Charlotte asked us to be able to do that yeah and we actually got one of the sweetest little thank yous back. It was from Ava Kearns, and she's from Edgewood, Iowa, and she was one of our winners that we that we gave out to. And it was she just has a very nice letter. Yeah, it's, it's very, very sweet, nice colors, and it's very sweet. Um, we also we got Charlotte, pictures, Claudette, guys. Not sure. I said Charlotte. Claudette. 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 Claudette um, also gave us a nice thank you letter, and then she also gave us some pictures of some of the people that got our prizes. So one of the people that got prizes was this person. Oh, she put stuff on the back. Yeah. Ellie. Miss so, Ellie Malone. I'm going to let you read from it. From Pocahontas County. Uh, this is the first quilt created by this senior 4-H member. She did pantogram quilting, lots of eye appeal. Very well done. Congratulations, Ellie. And then I have... Oh, I didn't miss this. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, Macy Cook from Delaware County. This 10th grader used minky fabric for these applique animals. Each block was a one of a kind. The embroidery mod module stitched the minky pieces in place using the satin stitch. Well done exhibit. Very nice, so, Macy. And oh, then that is cute. This one. This is from Lauren Jashke. I can't pronounce your last name, so I apologize, from Polk County. This is the last 4-H fair for this 12th grader. She experimented with the paper piecing. Oh, good for you. A former 4-H club leader went all out on the machine quilting at no charge. Way to go, Warren. Well done, and good job at paper piecing, girl. And then they, we did have a fourth one, but I'm not sure if but this is just an overall picture of all of the well-done quilts that were being a part of the Iowa State Fair this year for the... 4-H kids. So, so it says sewing and needlework. So well so. done to all you kiddos. Anyway, we may post some of these around the shop. Yeah. That way everybody else, if you come in, you can have a chance to see them. But anyway, it was just, it was really cool to be able to be a part of that and to help them be recognized for their great skills yeah. that they've already accomplished at such a young age since that's certainly not something that I did at that age. I was still finger painting then. <laughs> I was just avoiding my sewing machine. I think it was probably safe that I wasn't. I, I don't even think I was near a sewing machine. So Pam says she loves the cactus. I know those are so cool, aren't they? And she paper pieced those. So That's pretty impressive. She's a step ahead of me yeah. on that one. I'm still yeah. waiting, Chris. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh, Eventually. Hi from Omaha to Vicki. So okay. what, shall we do our new stuff? Yes. We have gotten a few new things in, so we wanted to share that with you guys. The first of them is... This is where Eileen's hunting skills come in. Steph sends me... A, was it a Pinterest picture? Um, well, no. I, I think I found it on... I found a, a place where it was. Yeah. I, gotcha. So mm -hmm. she's like, can we get this? And I said, well, I don't know. Let me see if I can figure out where, you know, where, where we can order it from. So I did. And actually, I'm glad I did because they've got some really cool um, really cute patterns. Items. And unfortunately, one of the patterns that I ordered is not available, so I was kind of bummed about she that. She said something about it wasn't produced by them, so they couldn't. It do was it. on their website. Yeah. So well, maybe you could buy it by it, but you can't wholesale buy it. Yeah, I don't know. So, mm -hmm. anyways, so here it's called Magic Squares, and it's this kind of. Oh, go ahead. Cover me up this one. No, it's this kind of. Um, it illusionary. Gives, right, it's very illusionary. But it's not nearly as difficult 
as it looks. But anyway, I'm, I'm very excited. I've got ideas, I've got plans for this one. It even has a table runner option, which that table runner looks really cool. The table runner almost kind of reminds me of, um, what's that computer game, Minesweeper? Oh, yeah. Minesweeper. Yeah, a little bit, yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, so it is very, very cool. So that was, anyway. this is what led me to their website. But then I found, I love Chinese food, if y'all don't know that. So I thought this is really cool, but it's fabric takeout boxes. You make your own. So make your own fabric takeout box. So great little like gifty box. We have that. Okay. That's you new. can have it for gifts. You can have it for your own Chinese food. You might want to line it with something, <laughs> but you know. It's in blue. But also, you guys, this would be great if you, you know, have um, like uh, associates that you work with or whatever, your, your colleagues that you do little Christmas gifts for. Make a bunch of these in Christmas fabrics. Oh, so yeah. that becomes part of the gift. And then you throw in, I don't know, like when people do ornament exchanges. So this would be great. Or if you like bake some cookies and yeah. you put those inside so it's like completely homemade. Or if you that bake cool. some cookies by going to the store. <laughs> then you put them in here and it looks like they're homemade. Or your neighbor gifts you their cookies and you go, perfect! <laughs> I needed those, thanks. <laughs> thanks. So this is my favorite one. This is a, a called Mosaic Sun. And it is applique. And it is just, it makes me happy looking at it. It's not very big. But it's just How keep on going like that. It is only sixteen inch square. Oh, so if you wanted a whole bunch of them, yeah, you could make them as a lot of blocks. Yeah, so it's just super cool, and you could do different colors if you wanted to. You know, put them in. A I could bring out my son, my other son colors, yeah. and use those. Yeah. So this one's actually like my favorite one because it just makes me happy. The sun makes me happy. In other words, you weren't very happy today. I was not happy today. I do not like today's weather. I will complain to I was nobody fine with it because, you know, what can you do? The temperature itself was not boiling, nor was it freezing. I was I freezing. I had no problems. Freezing. Okay. She turned on the heater. I did. And, and now cool. we're back to air conditioning. So, now, we Steph said to me, you know, we don't have very many jelly rolls or two and a half inch strip sets in. I said, mm -hmm. I got you. Oh, I got you. So I've ordered some in, and these aren't all of them. We're missing a set that they didn't ship, so we should be getting more. So this is from Benertex. It's called Color Traditions, and it's very, very beautiful kind of cream, reds, blues, browns. Um, it's almost, I don't know, Civil War-ish? Well, I was going to say, it's traditional. So, I mean, if you're thinking your classic quilts or your classic color schemes. And it's just really pretty, you guys. It's so pretty. It's got scroll work and these like kind of axes. So come in and it's, look at these. It actually looks very fall like. Yeah, it's very you beautiful. Know, it's, it's not your spring bright cheery type colors. It's it's just sort of your fall cozy warm cozy, kind warm of color. warm colors. And then we have again from Bannertex because I just ordered all these from uh, Bannertex. It's called Classic Scrolls and Blenders. So these are kind of a blender one, which is kind of fun to have those. And as you can see, there we go. They're kind of some soft palette colors and some scroll work, and it's just really beautiful. And any of these could be done for jelly roll quilts or any two and a half. Two, yeah, and we've got Villa Rosa design patterns, um, two and a half inch oh gosh. patterns galore. We've got a lot of them. So we can, get, we can guys get you figured out. So the next one, this is probably my favorite one of the three, actually. It's, it's those with the whole sun thing. Yeah, and we have uh, 10 inch uh, layer cakes for this one. It's Accent on Sunflowers by Jackie Robinson, again from Better Tux. And it's just got these beautiful, look at that, beautiful, I, and I just back love, love those sunflowers with that blue. It is just gorgeous. I love these guys. So those are our new things this week. Um, I'm trying to think, what else did we get new? But I think that's about it. Oh, testing my memory. Oh, we did get in. That's kind of creepy looking. It's like an eye <laughs> staring at you. But we did get in more Olivia's, Olivia's. And we have set aside the Olivia's for all of you guys that have requested those. So the Olivia's are in. And again, they're so cute. So we, get, we got you. If you, if you requested you. them, they're behind the register just waiting for you. Yep. So, so. Uh, lovely flowers are brought to you by Story City Floral and Garden. Yes. My husband sent those to me. So I wanted to share the beauty of them. So you guys enjoy that as we're doing that. Very fragrant. So what else? Well, we we actually 
got the official announcement that we made it. We talked the, it l about it last yeah, week. We yeah, we talked about it last week that we're in the top five for the best quilt shops in Story County. Um, so anyway, the voting starts on the 5th. So today is the 3rd. That means it starts on Saturday. <laughs> so everybody gets one vote. I think we found out last time. So get in, get in there, vote. Mm -hmm. Vote us. for us if you want. Yeah, we'd love to have your vote. We won't come <laughs> back you down and call it, cause any problems if you don't. But you know. And the thing is, vote for everybody. And there's there will be no voter kinds. fraud. <laughs> We're Sorry. not going there. Um, <laughs> yeah, vote. there are lots of areas to cover. There are restaurants. There are retail shops. There are quilt shops. There are basically, you name it, they got it. So go vote for your favorite places. That's Everybody right. needs that support. That's right. And needs to know from it. So anyway, just don't, don't forget that. And we will have a link, I'm guessing, attached since we have one right um, there. We are waiting for um, oh, them the to upload it. Okay. So once they've uploaded it, check, uh, just keep watching our Facebook page and hopefully it'll pop up in your feed um, and we'll have that out there. And we might post it several times a week during the um, voting since it's the 5th through the 21st, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> bless you. <coughs> bless you. Okay. Um, so just keep an eye out for that, you guys, and, and vote for your favorite places. It's just, it's a great way to tell them that, th that they're appreciated and that you, they are enjoyed. So. Even if we don't get out to see, see them all the time, this is a good way yep. to get out there. So. Exactly. Anyway, much appreciated. All right, guys. You ready? So remember I talked about my favorite thing is those fabrics that can work as artwork? Mm hmm So we're going to show you why I love it. And I'm kind of addicted now, although I was kind of addicted before, but you know how when you stop doing something for a while and you forget how much you love doing it and then you do it again and then you're like, oh yeah, what I was that love word? doing this. What was that word you addicted? looked up in there? No. no. Oh, um, oh, I have to look at it. I took a screenshot of it because I knew I'd forget it. It's a French word for like the, the in-between time, in-between in foods that you eat, in-between, it's an entreme. Entremet. Your entremet. So this is an entremet project. So it's in between like your quilting projects, especially quilting. I said your quilting. quilting. Your your quilting, quilting projects. Project. So We're rocking out all the <laughs> So especially like those quilting projects that were pretty difficult, time consuming and whatnot. Exhausting. This is the perfect project for you. So it is going to involve and we need to clear clear the space. It and is move going this down. So well let me show them the stuff it's gonna okay. involve. So it's gonna involve some fabric. It's gonna involve a canvas of any size. It's going to involve Mod Podge. I need Mod Podge. I love Mod Podge. Mod Podge is my friend. Okay, and some sort of an application tool. I am just using the styrofoam paintbrush type things. Um, if you would like to have more of a textured look, then you'd want to go with an actual paintbrush to accomplish that. And then some sort of Wiping. Like a hard right. surface, like a credit card type thing, but I wouldn't use your credit card unless you don't want to use your credit card anymore, then use that. You can get like Mod Podge kits that have the brush, the little scraper thing, and all that kind of stuff. At you could also use like a kitchen, one of those kitchen scrapey tools. Yeah, you can that use would work. anything really. But I found these for like 25 cents, so I just grabbed a bunch, and that's what I'm going to use. So, okay. um, and a fine grit sandpaper. Now this is 220. This is optional. This is optional. I would actually use an even finer grit than 220, but this is all I could find right now, so this is what we got. So we're gonna okay. bring the camera down so y'all can see what I'm doing. So our heads will be cut off. I apologize, maybe not that much. I don't, I don't. There, hopefully this is not making you guys sick. So, how's that? Perfect, okay. So the first thing you're gonna do is find your fabric and you're gonna audition your fabric. And basically, this is what we're making, you guys. I should show them the final project, you I should. suppose. Why, the, why would they want to pay Why do you wanna do this? Why do you wanna pay attention? Because you can make beautiful things like this okay. for your home decor. So imagine, you guys, you have a quilt that you've decided to make out of these beautiful fabrics and you'd like to coordinate it and you put it in your family family room, living room, and you think, you know what, I'm just gonna, we're gonna put these on canvas, put them on the wall, make a pillow, do whatever, and you have these just gorgeous, gorge, this one I just absolutely love. 
I love, love, love this fabric. Oh. And depending on where what you grab the fabric, you can have four different panels from the same piece of fabric. Correct. And they're all going to look different. Correct. So what I've got in front of us here is just a fat quarter, a simple fat quarter. And, I, and we talk about auditioning fabric. So I want to decide what I'd like to feature on my artwork, okay? So in order to do that, you slip your, your canvas underneath and you just kind of go around and play with it and decide, do I want it to go this way, that way? Do I like the purples? Do I like the oranges? Do I like more rust? You know, what, what are you trying to pull out? Exactly, whatever you need. And so then you decide where you want to put it, and we've already done that here. You drop your canvas upside down, and you take any marker, any pen, something that's probably not going to bleed through, although I don't think it's going to make a difference, and you trace around that area. Okay? So that's the first thing you do. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your handy dandy quilter select ruler and you're going to go an inch and a half. Now I found for these canvases an inch and a half works perfect. That allows you to wrap it to the other side perfectly. So you can see it covers the other side just perfect. Okay? So if you have different size canvases, you're going to have to try to do try to figure out the perfect size. So you're going to take your rotary cutter, and I'm, I can't cut on here, you can pretend. but I can pretend, and I'm just going to cut out a rectangle an inch and a half larger than the rectangle that I've drawn on the back side of this fat quarter, okay? Now, once that is done, it's very important, so we're going to move on to the next step. Oh, we're going to show them that too. We can. You are going to go ahead and cut out, since we did an in inch and a half, you're going to cut out an inch and a half square from each corner. So you see that? So don't cut past or into you, what your drawn line is. Yeah. Okay? So you see that there's an inch and a half of a square cut out of each corner. That's going to make wrapping this on the canvas easier. Okay? So, Jerry, um, t uh, Jerry, we are going to post. Oops, we are going to post that when it comes up because it it will come out in the Ames newspaper. Oh, but we'll post the link. Person. Thank you, also, oh. Jerry. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to have the fun stuff. So now you're going to grab your canvas, like so. And this is where it gets messy sometimes. So you guys, if you want, make sure you have your surface area protected and wear gloves if you need to. I, I don't care if my hands get messy. I'm all about mess when it comes to this kind of project. So I'm just gonna dig and dive right in. You wanna make sure that you cover the surface of your canvas with the Mod Posh. That's gonna allow your fabric to adhere much better and to lay nice and flat. So we're just going to cover it, and you can actually just kind of pour it on, which that might be a little much, but that's okay. And doing a thin coat is best. You can drip it back in if you need to. It get a nice, even coat. Oh, we're getting on the blanket. See, I told you guys this was messy. This is a great project for kids, too, you guys. And if you've got the larger brush, then you can cover more surface area. It goes much quicker. This stuff does tend to dry pretty fast, so you kind of want to work a little quickly. And you're just going to cover this whole top area. We don't want to worry about the sides right at the moment. And see how I'm, my fingers are already getting grody, but that's okay. That is okay. All right, so we have that covered. Now, set that just that way, I'm going to lay out. I'm going to need it. I know. I'm holding on to it. That okay. way it doesn't chip Don't out. take it away from me. <laughs> okay. She can't be separated from the Mod Podge. I can't. So, now we're going to take that, flip it over. I'm looking at my rectangle that I drew, and I'm going to just drop this guy right on there, like so, like that. Like so, like that. And I'm going to press it down and just smooth this out. See? Getting gross. That's okay. I suffer for my art. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to take, and actually I've got some in here, so I'm going to just take Mod Podge, and I'm just going to run it along the sides here, 
and then up on top of here. And I tend to do the long sides first. You guys can do whatever you want. And then I wrap it to the back. And if you've ever reupholstered fabric or reupholstered chairs with fabric, you know that you want to kind of make it tight. And I'm using my palms to hold down this to give it weight while I'm pulling on it. And then you can just simply go right over the top with your Mod Posh. And you are just, you guys, you're just gluing this down. That's all you're doing. Then you're going to rotate it. And I suggest always doing the opposite sides. You're going to do the same thing and you're going to do it all the way around. So finish this side, this side, this side. If it's cut just a little wonky, you can trim it or you can use the glue just to glue it down in place. So, after that is all said and done, you're going to come back in and you're just going to literally go over the top and actually that's got Ooh, dried that's stuff, so we'll get some fresh. You're going to go over the top with it and it looks nasty. But it does dry clear. It does dry clear and of course I'm getting wrinkles because I have not completely attached mine but for time's sake we're just going to do this real quick and actually I had a thought about the wrinkles if you have wrinkles in here it might be kind of cool to actually purposely do that because then you can come back with some, some glue on top of those wrinkles and then you can actually do like a clear glitter or something that would make it sparkle and shine on top of those and that would kind of mm -hmm. give it a different effect too. So if you're doing something Christmassy and you want it to sparkle and shine because Christmas time is a great time to sparkle and shine, that would be perfect. So we've got our Mod Podge on and we've done all the sides. We're gonna pretend it's beautiful. We'll fix it later. And I'm gonna set this guy. We won't let it dry for too long. Yeah, so you, you let it dry. It takes like a half hour or so because you're not putting a thick layer on. So it doesn't take long to dry. But then you end up with something like this. Yes, it is a different pattern. <laughs> Ta-da! See, this is what Mod Podge does. It changes your fabric. Just kidding. So this is what we end up with for one coat. Now, I recommend doing a couple of coats. And if you look, um, I don't know if we have this fabric out. The pattern or the panel? The panel. Well, I have it all cut up. Yeah, so let's grab one that's similar in color tones so they can see it. I'm hoping you guys will be able to see this on camera and maybe not, but Mod Podge does something to fabric that I can't explain. I'm not sure why. It brightens it. So this is after one coat of the Mod Podge and it's the matte finish Mod Podge. It's not the high gloss. They do have high gloss and other things, mm -hmm. but it's just, yeah, hold that up and see. I don't, I, again, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but there's just some kind of a magical thing that happens when you add the Mod Podge to the fabrics. So at this point, this is just that has one coat on it. I would take my very fine grit sandpaper. Again, this 220 is probably a little bit cor too coarse for this. And you're just going to knock down some of those bumps and just kind of do this. And if you guys have tack cloth, you know, that tacky cloth that you would use to help get off any um, impurities or whatever, then you would take over that or use a, a damp cloth to get rid of that. So you can get rid of the dust and all that kind of stuff. But then, now you're going to come back in with your second coat of Mod Podge. And see, it looks terrible, doesn't it, guys? You're looking at it and you're going, oh no, it looks terrible. I hope it dries. And I'm going to do this whole thing because I don't want to have to do it again? Well, I don't want, yeah, I mean, I guess I could sand it down and redo it, but I don't want to. But see, look how fast this goes. I literally did one in about less than 15 minutes. So that's what I'm saying, guys. This is a great project for kids. Or your fabric room, if you just like a certain fabric and you can't ever seem to cut it, get to the point where you can cut it. Yeah. You just love it that much. And you don't want to cut it up. You just want it to be there. You, well, this is a good way to use it. Yeah. And so the Mod Podge protects the fabric. Um, I, I'm, if I remember correctly, they make a Mod Podge that's for outdoor use. So I think it has some UV protectant in it. Um, and then you could certainly hit this up with some um, acrylic. Um, oh, gosh. What's that stuff called? So it, it, oh, that clear stuff. The clear stuff. Clear acrylic coating. So it makes yeah, it. Acrylic. Isn't it? Yeah, Isn't it yeah. There's a term for it. The guys should know what it's called. But you would use it after you finish staining your woodwork and stuff like that. And that would protect it too. So 
Now you have this, and I would do the back too, but for time's sake, I'm not going to worry about it. It looks scary. It looks white. It's shiny and, and all that goodness. So, but you guys, it's going to dry clear and it's going to be beautiful. And when people look at it, they touch it. It feels like you've just painted something on there. Well, and these, because the, the fluidity actually Gosh. look like those things that you see on Facebook or uh, several other places. Dwayne says polyurethane. Thank you, That's Dwayne. It. That's it. See, I knew he would. Yeah, know. yeah. So uh, these are just absolutely, this one, this one is actually probably my favorite, favorite. I love the floral one, but this one, because it's so paint-like, mm -hmm. that it is my favorite, favorite. Well, I think Dwayne said he liked those two, and he liked the last one that he liked. The floral, yeah, yeah. the two fluidity. I, I tend to go with these, yeah, because it's more paint like. Mm -hmm. But again, like Steph said, you guys, this is a perfect way to use up that fabric that you just don't want to cut up because it is, you know, it's too pretty to cut. Well, and if you have a really big canvas, you yes. can make it as big as you want because they come in canvas, canvases come in all sizes, all kinds of sizes. You could do a grouping of several different fabrics that go together or if you have a color scheme in your yeah so this room. this panel that we took this from actually has um a total of 10 or 9 or 8 different blocks there's there's six six actually. okay <laughs> yeah i didn't know apparently um so six different ones so you have all these matching ones and then you can put them all around your house and they're so simple and so easy and ta-da you're done decorating for Christmas. You got your Christmas. How yeah. easy is that? These are awesome gifts. You make these for your family members. You buy one panel that has six. You have six gifts. And I mean, the canvases, we have them, we're going to have them for sale here. So they're, they're inexpensive. So very easy to get. Mod Podge, you can get a big old container of this for inexpensive. And this is going to last you for forever as long as you put the lid on. And these guys yes. are cheap. You throw them away after you're done because it's not worth saving them. And, and one panel is ten fifty. Yeah. So you've basically got six gifts that you can do for under ten dollars a gift and you're golden. Yeah. So and the other thing I thought of because I'm always thinking of weird things. That's something, yes. Yes. So what I thought, rather than getting rectangular ones, getting like six inch squares. And then you cover them in the fabrics and you can do some half square triangles and you can create a quilt block up on your wall. So simple. And it's not like you have to sew anything because nope. you can just lay the fabric on top. Yep. As Mod long as you don't have threads going right. all over the place, you, you're good. You, you Mod Podge it down. You know, you can put a high gloss on it. You can put a matte finish. You can do whatever you want. And you can actually make like a barn quilt outside very easily doing this, oh, yeah. especially if you use that polyurethane or um, the UV protectant Mod Posh. I swear there is that out there. I, I, we'll have to get more details yeah, for that. We'll get more details. But anyways, this is a fun, simple project. And like I've said, I've been going to town with these. I've decided I'm like looking at the shop and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do that one and that one and that one. And you, we may not have any for sale because I might just use them all up. So come rescue me and buy our canvases, get some fabric. And if you, I think this is something that we could do a make and take on a Saturday. Sure. Um, so sure. be on the lookout for that as well. And there you go. Tori said it's like a barn quilt, but not. <laughs> it's, well, if you put it on your barn, then it's a barn quilt. It could be a house quilt. It's a house quilt. So okay. we're going to so go ahead and tip our up. screen up. Go back to normal. Oh, Hello. You know what? I forgot to show them. What did you forget to show them? The other thing you guys can do with Mod Posh. I did this oh, a while yes. back. She brought it in. So my husband, Kurt, and I, we found this really cute, like, end table tray looking thing at Hobby Lobby. Pop at a place. It's actually a really nice place. And we bought it and, it, and we decided that we were going to repaint it and distress it. My husband's very good at doing the distressing of um, things. And I found a fabric, and this is actually before we opened up the quilt shop, so it wasn't mm -hmm. what we got here, but I found some fabric, and it technically was a canvas fabric. Um, it wasn't like a regular cotton fabric like you'd use for quilting, but I loved it so much, and I decided to decoupage it onto the top. So I'm going to show you. This is the tray, and this is how beautifully it turned out for the distressed. It's, it's just really cool. Kurt is very good at that. We actually had them at the shop here for a while. Yeah. That's what I decoupaged it on. 
And the really cool thing, and I was kind of upset at first about it, but I'm like, you know what? It's cool. So basically, I don't know if it's this one or the other one. One of them, I had to piece it, and I was like, oh, dang it. I was able to line it up, and then I decoupage it. But what it looked like, it actually looked like boards because it, you could kind of see a gap, and I thought that was actually really cool because it made it look like it was a board. board. Yeah, so it was really cool. So decoupaging your fabrics for decor is an amazing thing to do with your fabric. I'm telling you, she loves Ooh, decoupage. decoupage. So it's a great way to coordinate your house. Exactly. All right, I'm done so, with the decoupage. Anyway, the on to other things. <laughs> I'll let you clean up. Sorry, guys. Um, we got the new country register. Yay! But because of the progressive dinner yesterday, I did not cook a darn thing out of it because we spent Monday night taking over our kitchen, and thanks to Eileen and Tori, we were only cooking for six hours. It was <laughs> six hours, midnight, but nine oh. batches. But my gosh, but can we make pretzel bites? We are really good at pretzel bites. There you go. We, and oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and we found something that goes really. When Eileen oh, said, God. "I'm going to get the good stuff," I had no idea what she meant. Ken's Steakhouse. <laughs> this is so good! And it's not that expensive, but I think Ken's Steakhouse like dressings are really good. They're, they really are. I, mean, I had their Thousand like, Island stuff, yeah. and that's really good. So, yeah. okay, not that we're trying to promote other businesses in this particular location, but it's good. This stuff's good. So, anyway, we do have our... Um, are we going to eat this? Like, if you want. I don't want. They're We've very good. We've so many of them. But I'm kind of sick of them. But they are very good. It's very simple. Um, Steph texted me the recipe, and I will be posting that link to the website. It is, do you guys know I'm not a baker? So when I heard there was yeast involved, I'm like, oh, mm. but it's actually super easy. It's on the Cookie Rookie website. Mm -hmm. So that's easy, basically, it's soft, just an online kind of thing. So Easy, there. soft pretzel bites. So not difficult, but she'll post the link and we'll be all good. Five-star review. Yep, that's how good it is. And we had folks that came down and said, "Oh, these are the pretzel bites we've been hearing so much about." Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I missed that yeah, part. Yeah, so that was that was a good good thing. So that was good. So no food tonight except knowing that these are here. You can make um, your own pretzel bites and enjoy. And one, they said one batch is supposed to serve eight people. <laughs> what that means, I don't know because we made nine batches and had 770 pieces and it did not we serve were, everybody but we were being conservative in our in our we, we didn't sizes. give everybody yeah. huge chunks because it was supposed to be just a bite because that's what the progressive dinner at about. the end we were <laughs> by the end filling these eating. up with pretzel bites and giving them out here eat them take them you don't want them. and we each still took a huge container. so our families are going to be benefiting from this because yeah we got a big old container full of them I have ours in the freezer at home. Because <laughs> they last longer that way. Charlie, Tori, Dwayne, you know where to find them. Exactly. Uh, so Ours are still in the car, guys. So we'll have them at <laughs> So they'll be warm. Okay. What else do we have for tonight? That's it. Is that it? That's we're, it. We're, we're good. three minutes over. That's not bad. We're doing well. So okay. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's show. Hope you enjoyed our little demonstration of what you can do with fabric other than sewing it. Wait, I lie. We have one more thing we want to okay. show you. That's and I'm right. going to remove all this stuff because I don't want it to we get eaten We don't want glue it. anywhere near this. So you know our favorite pattern designer, Miss Chris Hobbs, here local in Story City. You've seen her on you Facebook get Live. Mm, get that? Okay. This is her trophy back that she is lending to us to show in the shop. And we want to show you. So now you just see his antlers. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Woo! Santa Paul. Isn't this cool, you guys? I love her stuff. She just does such a nice look. We haven't, before we had her T-Rex, yep. we still have her po polar bears, but we she's have her willing to share this guy with us. And we have kit for all of her stuff. Right. And the thing is, the kit actually shows a green background, so a lot of ours have the green background, mm -hmm. but... You can you know, do whatever the heck you, you want. You can do whatever background you want, obviously. We had somebody that did like a, a, a foresty or a um, camouflage background for this. Mm -hmm. So, and I know my husband, Kurt, wants me to make him one of these, so that's going to be in my to-do project list. So maybe if I got time, I can make small frames. Oh, I thought he was saying something about that. Never mind. So, yeah. This is cool. So, so well done, anyway, Chris. You yes. come in and check it out. So, 
Anyway, so okay. now we're done. Now we're done. Is there anything else? I hope we're good. We're good. All right, you guys. I'm going to wait for it to fold up so we can do our little sign off. So we're good. We are good. So thanks for hanging out with the best quilt shop owners in Story City, you guys. We'll see you, this, we'll see you next week. Same so time, same so place. Bye. Bye.